Hi everybody, welcome back. We're going to do our reading wrap up for March. It's a bit late, I know. Colouring will be coming soon as well, I do promise. I just, I'm a bit behind with videoing because Jennifer's not going to bed when she's supposed to, which makes it hard for me to video because I usually do my videos when she's in bed. So I'm having to do them in my spare time before I go and get her from nursery. And some days, I only get two days when I can do that. So in March, I read 19 books. There were 16 physical books and three Kindle books or ebooks. So we're going to start with one of the ebooks. And the first one I read was Eye of Time. Let's see if it'll focus. I haven't got my uh, tablet here. It's downstairs by Adrian Cousins. So this is a story about uh, uh, this guy named Frank Stone. He basically is a down and out living on the streets of London in about 2015-16. He's recruited by a secret organisation to go back in time to prevent the murder of his wife um, and it was this murder that caused his life to implode. The reason is that she is a Tory MP and they think she is the only one who can stop the European crisis that is coming. So Frank goes back in time, he is told he won't remember his life, his previous life, until somebody says his name, which happens quite quickly because he wakes up in bed and his wife's with him and she calls him by his name and he remembers everything. So now he's got to try and stop her from being murdered. It is very cleverly written. I really did enjoy it. I gave it four stars, so it must have been good. Um, basically, it's all this trying to figure out who is the killer, why did they want to kill her, um, all the time and he falls in love with somebody else and she's fallen in love with somebody else so can he save her and can he make a new life for himself back in 1976 um, with this new love of his life well we'll have to find out won't you we? we have to read it it's very good it's very very good the second book I finally managed to finish this piece of trash yes it's that bad one star that's only because I can't really give it zero I could give it zero but so basically this is the story of um, obviously why Bobby Kennedy killed Marilyn Monroe. Um, Mike Rothmiller with Douglas Thompson. Now Mike Rothmiller was an LAPD detective. He was in something called the OIC, o OCID, which is like RCD. <coughs> CID, Organised Criminal Investigation Department. However, he was not a detective at the time of Marilyn's death. He wasn't a, a police officer at that point. So basically he claims within the OCID files there is a copy of parts of her diary, um, photocopied parts of her diary by the way, which he hand writes out. So you're supposed to believe that. And basically it's just, it says new evidence, there is new evidence. What I find in there is times when he's leading witnesses and putting words into their mouth, which again would be wrong. There are things that have been disputed, like her doing the, like Eunice Mary doing the washing. We know Marilyn didn't have a washer dryer in her house at the time of her death. He calls the house Curse and Perficio. She, it was never referred to as that. The address was 12305 Fifth Helena Drive. Kirsten Perficio is referring to a plaque that was outside the, that is outside the front of the door which means I'm finishing my journey there's just so many absolute rubbish claims in here that it was really hard to do but it did actually spawn a 15 part TikTok mini series on it so if you want to watch it go and catch, check out Marilyn and me I read just for the fun of it Second Form Mallory Towers by Enid Blyton so I read these when I was a kid Ooh. I remember reading them, they were brilliant, I loved them and um, yeah so basically the girls are in their second term, this basically this, t this year Belinda has a talent for drawing, Alicia has a talent for tricks and someone has a talent for stealing purses, it's lovely, nice, nice to carry on um, reading some books from my childhood and I hope to do that again, I'm just looking for the next Kindle book for when it comes up which is that one. Stephen King book of the month if it bleeds four books or four novellas uh, from Stephen King uh, including the title one if it bleeds which is Holly Gibney um, absolutely brilliant loved it there were three really but my, the, the, then there's alongside that one uh, which is a sequel to the outsider there's Mr Harrigan's phone the life of Chuck which is weird and rat all of them are really good, but my favourite is Mr. Harrigan's Phone. So I do recommend picking this up. It's an absolutely brilliant book. I love it. 
then um, I read Two Doors Away by Ellie L. Spellman. Now this, I know the author so this, I've worked with her for a while so basically this is a story about two people and the, the house that's in between them, a man and a woman. Um, both of them are lonely, um, she pretends she's got a great life, she hasn't, he hasn't got a great life, he's living in a house share. They're both lonely and they're strangers but what brings them together is every night at 10 o'clock the person that lives in the house in between them starts playing the piano and then one night um, our leading character, what's her name, Steph, um, tells them to shut up and, and you do find out why and they go silent and the person stops playing and they don't hear it again and so Steph and Eric go closer trying to find out what happened to the person at number 26, the house in between them. So they go and uh, look for this person and yeah it's a really heartwarming story I really enjoyed it I gave that one five stars because it was really good um if a cake bleeds got four married tires three <coughs> so do excuse me I'm just gonna cough now <coughs> excuse me anyway yes I recommend that one to pick up if you if you like those sort of heartwarming stories then I read the reader on the 627 I'm not going to try and pronounce his name it's really difficult so it's very weird it's an odd book but I did enjoy it basically this guy works at a book pulping plant he hates it the thought of pulping books is abhorrent to him he thinks the machine's got a life of its own he's trying to tack down one particular round of books because his friend lost his leg in the machine and they <coughs> excuse me found that in this particular run of a book that paper that pulp was used so they're getting his leg back by buying all the copies of this book <laughs> it sounds rather gruesome but at some point he finds a diary not in on the train or in in, in the book pulp implant but he does find a diary written by a girl I think it was Julian it was or Ju Jules or something like that and he becomes close by reading this diary and in the end he wants to try and track her down and give her her book back which is really nice. I really enjoyed that one as well. Oh, yeah, excuse me, I'm a bit... Oh. I did read one play this month, which was this one, The Unremarkable Death of Marin Rowe by Elton Town and Jones, which was for the Edinburgh Fringe. This is published by Samuel French. Very short. It's a monologue. Takes place on the last evenings of Marilyn's death. Um, she does mention a Bobby... She had more than one Bobby in her life, for instance Bobby Miller, which was Arthur Miller's son, they were still friends at the time of her death and she still wrote to them. Um, but she just, it's just a recap of her life very shortly before she dies. Um, no murder in this one. It, it, it's nothing special, it's a three star read. Um, it, it Obviously as a play it would play better to actually watch it. But I did enjoy it, so um, yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad I, I got it. There's another one for the uh, Marilyn collection back to the Kindle books and I read Jason Apsley's Second Chance. This is again by Adrian Cousins. Now this is the one set in 1976, the previous one was set in 79. That's right when Thatcher took power. Um, and in this case this book Jason Apsley is in a car crash with one of his co-workers and he's killed instantly and transported back to 1976 uh, where he is still Jason Apsley but it's a different Jason Apsley. Um, he tries to prevent certain things happening um, but all that happens is things happen sooner because you can't have two of the same person in the same time so for instance he saves his brother's life because his brother runs out in front of an ice cream truck or something but by being there his parents die early and his mother's pregnant with him ah. they were killed in a, an, a, a car crash in the 80s Instead they, they died, or a train crash in the 80s, said they died in the 70s. And he got to come to terms with that. He also uh, meets somebody and finds in, find, falls in love, finds out that he's got a daughter. It's not his, obviously it's the original Jason Apsley. And it's just how he comes to terms with living in 1976. It's really, again, Adrian Cousins is brilliant at these. I can't wait till he does another one. They're really, really good. I really enjoyed this one as well. Classic of the month was Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. This one, I really enjoyed it, but people say it's sci-fi, people say it's horror. I say it's neither, although it's also partly both. It's a tragedy. It, it, it's truly Shakespearean tragedy. <sighs> Frankenstein builds his monster. Doesn't like what he sees. 
leaves the lab, stays out all night, goes back, monster's not there, or the creature's not there. Forgets about the creature for two whole years. Hmm. Doesn't wonder where the creature's gone when he's gone back to the lab and it's not there. He's just, oh, it's not there, thank God for that. What? Really? You know, it's, it's, it's like a great big plot hole. Anyway, two years pass, he finds out that uh, his brother's been killed and he suspects his creature. So he goes back, he meets the creature. The creature by this point has learned to talk and write and tells him of what has happened in the two years. And it's truly, truly heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. And as we know, he asks for Frankenstein to build him a mate, a female one, but, he can't, but Frankenstein won't do it. So the, the creature goes off on a rampage and starts killing everybody. And then Frankenstein just runs across the world chasing after the creature until, well, he dies, basically. And then the creature doesn't get captured and the creature <coughs> finds out that his creator's dead and he's got no purpose in life anymore. So he takes himself off somewhere. I make it sound really dull, don't I? It's really good. I, I gave it four stars. I really did enjoy it, but I just felt that there's there's two there's a two year plot hole. Yes, we know what happened to the creature, but how did he spend two years not thinking about where this creature had gone? Did he not wonder? You know, I'm sure it probably mentioned it in there, and I missed it. But it was like you go away, come back, your creature's gone, and you don't think about it, and then it's two years later. But yeah, I did enjoy it really. So I'll pop that there. The Couple Next Door by Shari Lapina. This one was actually recommended to me by a friend at work without me realising. I already had it on my TBR for the month. Um, yeah, so basically this couple go next door to a party, just a dinner party, the four of them, leaving their six-month-old daughter alone in the house simply because they've got a monitor and they think it's only next door, everything will be fine. When they go back, she is missing and sleeping. So what happened who stole the child where is she is she okay it's a really really complicated story and it goes all around the houses but it is so gripping it is a really good book again i gave it four stars i can't fault it it's a really good book um yeah not quite a five star but it was it was very very good i did enjoy it so yeah couple next door uh, next, I did buy borrow some from the library, which I never do. And the first one I got is Christina Henry, The Ghost Tree. So in this one, it's about Lauren and Miranda. They've been friends forever, and every day they'll say they'll meet at the ghost tree. Um, but every year, a girl goes disappears and is found dead in the woods. Until one year, Lauren's father goes missing, and he's found dead in the woods. Because... Every year, the mayor pulls a girl's name out of the hat because the town has been cursed by witches. And you have to go into the story to find out why. And Lauren should have been the victim, but because her dad took her place, everything's out of whack. The mayor wants the curse to be put back on, but they want the curse to end. So can they end the curse? It is such a good book. I gave this one five stars. I was gripped by it. It was absolutely fantastic. And I nearly didn't pick this up. I put it, picked it up, put it back on the shelf and then went back to it. And I'm so glad I did. Uh, then, oh, I missed one. Where is it? Here it is. Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I thought I'd pick this one up and have a look because I've heard, you know, I loved Evelyn Hugo. I, I, I was reading it. I thought this is a really weird way of writing it, you know, in that interview style. But that's what made it so good. I really enjoyed it. And, you know, Daisy Jones and Six Band. What did they get up to? Why? What happened? Absolutely really good book. Yeah, I'm so glad I picked it up from the library. And I gave that four stars. Most of them are four stars. And then the next one is called A Secret History of Witches. So, basically... The witch, witch hunters are still chasing witches in the 1820s. Um, the grand witch, the, the head of the family, gives her life so that her family can escape across the channel to the UK and they go to Cornwall preserving the old ways as much as they can, practicing half-remembered spells in hope of revival. So we go through each generation and that, so it's all books. So we've got the book of whatever the first one's name is, the book of when, uh, the book of so-and-so, the book of this, uh, until we get to World War II. Ooh, there's another one coming. Force of Time. Oh, I might have to have a look at that in a minute. 
sorry I've just noticed there's another one out in one of the series I'm reading where's the anyway but yeah so it's a really really good book again a library book I, I was gonna pick this up because it's got history witches and secrets in the title right next one ahead of his time Adrian Cousins is the second in the Jason Apsley series I love the simple covers so in this one it's a few months later it's January he has now married the woman he met when he ended up back in thing back in 1976 he has adopted two children one of whom would if he had been the normal Jason would have grown up to be his best friend Beth and her brother now what happens in this one is a few months later in January the person who was traveling with him in the car passes away and wakes up in 1976 77 and so the story is how does this person get on what is he there for of course this causes trouble because now they've got two people with the same story of traveling back in time and <coughs> this person finds it harder to adapt and he's trying to oh, things come on trying to um adjust but he's making lots of cock-ups which makes Jason's life hard so it's quite funny in that point of view we still got loads to go uh, next is uh, MJ Aldridge Liar Liar which is book four in the Helen Gray series this is not as good as the first book which was Eeny Meeny which is fantastic um, this is about somebody starting fires and killing people but there's more it's not just a general arsonist there is reason behind these but can Grace find out what links the victims and why they were chosen and who is the killer again I did enjoy it I still gave it I gave it three stars but it, it wasn't as good as as the first one and everybody said this is the weakest book in the series but I still enjoyed it so yeah happy with that one that one's all right um nothing to fear Karen Rose another writer I love is Karen Rose so Sue Conroy's out for revenge she's recently received a release from prison she wants to find everybody who's put her there and kill them basically so she abducts an 11 year old deaf boy um to get back at his mother mainly because she's the one that helped put her away because she was using this boy as a drugs mule when he was a baby and it gets into all that she goes to chicago and hides out in hanover house who we have read about before in other books by um this author run by Dana Dupinski now obviously Dana safeguards the people that she uh, works with because of course they are mostly battered women but in this case she's not so can Dana find out what's going on can she save the, the boy and can they get Sue to justice brilliant brilliant book loved it I obviously read this one last month because Mara and I are so short it's just got little little tiny bite-sized pieces of writing not a lot to read in there it's all right I gave it three it's a nice book for your collection only two more <coughs> excuse me um Atom Bomb Angel by Peter James this is Vintage James so this came out in 1982 originally I think terrorists are planning to destroy Britain's nuclear power plants as well as plants in Canada US Spain and France and the Russians are behind it there's a surprise god this is the height of the KGB in the Cold War so it's not surprising um and chairman of the Atomic Energy Authority disappears he's like the man in charge of running them all so can Max Flynn our hero find out what's going on and prevent a nuclear catastrophe it was good it's not the best Peter James obviously his writing's got better over the years and finally the last book I read was Acting Up by Melissa Nathan she's the one that wrote The Nanny if you've ever read this it's about um, a journalist named Jasmine Field who auditions for a part in a one-off production of Pride and Prejudice uh, with a famous movie star named Harry Noble who she thinks is really obnoxious uh, and he is because it's good stuff for her her column and a lot of fun but uh, Jazzy's best friend went goes off with uh, somebody she doesn't like and Harry Noble is falling in love with her she's falling in love with him and yeah it is a nice story it's a lovely little story well worth picking up didn't take me too long nice nice roundup to the end of the month 
So those are the 19 books that I read in March. What do you think? Did I do okay? Did you read, have you read any of these and what do you think of them? And, and, and you know, give me any recommendations. I'm always looking for them. That's why I'm always watching booktube and book talk, looking for more books to add to my ever increasing TBR, which I'm slowly bringing down, I hope. Anyway, that's it for now. I'll see you in the next video. Bye everyone.